the International Organization of Motor Vehicles. There were more than 1,300,000,000 cars in operation as of 2015, and according to the Navigant Research Consulting Team, more than 120 million cars have been sold every year since 2015. It's thus safe to say that at the time of this video, there are as many as 2 billion cars in the world. In 1885, the world saw the first car when Carl Frederick Benz built his motor wagon. In 1886, he patented the first automobile. Just like modern cars, Benz's invention ran on an internal combustion engine. Along with the car, Benz also patented the speed regulation system, spark plug, gear shift, water radiator, carburetor, and other small automotive parts. While it's true that Benz invented the car, it's also true that he wasn't the first to come up with this idea. People had been trying to build self-propelled vehicles well before Benz. Back in the early 1550s, Leonardo da Vinci designed a cart that was meant to move on its own without being pulled by horses. A replica of Leonardo's invention can be found today in the historic House Museum of Chateau du Clos Lucet, France. Carl Frederick Benz was born on November 25, 1844, in what was then Molberg, now part of the city of Karlsruhe in Germany. It's believed that Carl's father, a locomotive driver, sparked his interest in mechanics. He died in a railway accident when Carl was only two years old. It was then that his name was changed to Carl Frederick Benz in remembrance of his father. His childhood was far from idyllic. Without a husband, his mother struggled alone. Even so, she was undeterred, and she strove to give her only child a good education. Little Benz was a fast learner. He also developed an interest in photography and repaired wall clocks. Luckily for the boys, he was handy with tools from an early age. In 1860, 15-year-old Carl graduated from school and studied mechanical engineering at the Polytechnical School for four years. He then worked as a mechanical engineer. Although he did like his job, his urge to create and design took over. So after two years of working at the factory, he decided to try his luck elsewhere. Life had already taught him that to get money, you've got to work. And work he did. For several years, he would work for small companies, take gigs from different shops, and help repair farm equipment. He worked 60 hours a week, all the while hoping to open a business of his own. In 1871, when he and a friend August Ritter saved enough money, they launched their iron foundry and mechanical workshop. As is often the case, Carl and his partner lacked experience. At first, their enthusiasm and ambition kept them going but soon they were running out of money and new orders. When the struggling businessmen got into debt, August thought his business was done for and decided to leave. Carl, however, still believed in the success of their company, and try as he might, he couldn't make Ritter stay. Carl was left alone and in debt. He couldn't even pay the rent. It was a trying time for him, but it didn't bring him down. Carl knew he would make it, and he never stopped thinking about his internal combustion engine. To save his business, he decided to turn to the father of his girlfriend, Carl Frederick Ringer. His future father-in-law was a carpenter, and although a simple man, he kept his feet on the ground. He recognized the talent and ambition of Benz and believed he had potential. So he loaned the young man a hefty sum that Carl used to buy out Ritter's share. On July 20th, 1872, Carl Benz and Cecilia Bertha Ringer got married and the loan Carl received from his father-in-law was forgiven as a dowry. The marriage of Carl and Bertha Benz was exemplary. It lasted for their whole life and brought them five children. Bertha made a notable contribution to the invention of the first car, but first things first. Once Carl had the mechanical workshop all to himself, he started working on the internal combustion engine that he was planning to use in farm equipment. At the same time, Benz was developing the idea of a vehicle that wouldn't rely on human or animal power. The work took him six years, and on December 31, 1878, he got a patent for the two-stroke gasoline engine. For the next three years, Carl designed new things while repairing equipment and carriages in his workshop. As he would later confess, the money he earned was barely enough to cover the expenses for his inventions, but he always had his wife, giving him support and sacrificing her own needs for him. In 1883, with the support of investors, Carl founded a new company, Benz and Sia, 
where he set up mass production of gasoline engines. At the same time, Carl kept working on his self-propelled cart until in 1885, he finally made a three-wheeled automobile with a four-stroke engine. Carl Benz alone designed every component of his car and managed to overcome a number of technical problems. The first car made by Carl Benz in 1885 was a three-wheeled, two-seater carriage that weighed 550 pounds and had high-spoked wheels. It was powered by Benz's new water-cooled four-stroke gasoline engine with an output of 0.9 horsepower. The cylinder was located above the rear axle. A simple belt system served as a single-speed transmission, varying torque between an open disc and a drive disc. The car moved at a now ridiculous 10 miles per hour. Back then, however, the invention was revolutionary. The creation was named the Motor Wagon. In the same year, Carl, for the first time, demonstrated his three-wheeled, self-propelled carriage to the people of Mannheim. The invention, however, caused more irritation than interest. As Ben was driving around, the noise of the engine scared the horse of a butcher, so it broke into a gallop, making the goods fall out of the cart. To make up for it, Carl had to pay for the damaged goods. As for the car, he parked it in his workshop and kept on perfecting it. On January 29, 1886, after a few modifications and multiple tests, the motor wagon was granted a German imperial patent. In 1887, the first automobile made its debut at an exhibition in Paris. The car didn't excite much interest among customers, although engines were in great demand in the market, especially in Germany. At first, the general public didn't accept Benz's invention. In part, it was down to the laws. Car owners were obliged to drive slowly. At some point, charges were pressed against Benz. His drivers allegedly raced past the police, as the engineer would later write in his memoirs. Not only that, but to use his own car, Benz had to get permission from the authorities. The speed limit was set to 4 miles per hour in urban areas and 8 miles per hour outside. For Benz, that just wasn't enough, so he started taking officials for car rides and, with time, managed to gain permission to drive faster than horse-drawn carriages. In 1887, a breakthrough came when Benz's wife went on a trip without telling her husband about it. Bertha took the car to visit her parents in Forgeheim, taking their two sons. They had to stop to refuel and pushed the car on slopes, but other than that, the 65-mile trip was a smooth ride. When Bertha and the kids arrived in Forzheim at nightfall, she sent a telegram to let her husband know they were all right. Before long, all of Germany learned about her long-distance ride. Both the trip and Carl Benz's car received considerable media attention. It was the beginning of his path to fame and success. It's worth mentioning that another German engineer, Gottlieb Daimler was also working on the first car independently from Benz. Although a baker's son, he designed engines and opened up his own workshop near Stuttgart. In 1885, he made an engine with an output of one horsepower and a year later installed it in a carriage. That was the first four-wheeled car in the world. In 1893, Benz made a four-wheeler of his own. He patented the double pivot steering system that allowed the wheels on the same axle to rotate independently. The invention became another technological triumph of Benz. The new car was a two-passenger convertible on high wheels. A special compartment concealed a single-cylinder three-liter engine with an output of about three horsepower. The car was Benz's favorite creation. It's no wonder he named it Victoria, Victory. As for Daimler, in 1890, he also founded his company, Daimler Motor & Gesellschaft, that starting in 1901 produced its own automobiles under the Mercedes brand. The first Mercedes was the 35 horsepower racing model released in 1901. It had a four cylinder engine with a capacity of almost six liters and an output of 35 horsepower. The car featured a wide wheelbase, low center of gravity, inclined steering column, and a honeycomb radiator. It weighed 2,000 pounds and reached a then mind blowing top speed of 47 miles per hour. The design was created by Wilhelm Maybach himself. There are several versions of how the legendary brand got its name. One of those suggests that Emil Jelinek, the head of the Daimler representative office in France and Austrian consul general in Nice, insisted on it. The car was thus named after the Virgin of Mercy, or in Spanish, Maria de las Mercedes. 
According to another version, the car was named after Emil Jelinek's daughter. Her name was Adriana, but she was normally called by her nickname, Mercedes. Her father also used it as his pseudonym when participating in car races. It wasn't until 1926 that Benz and Sia merged with Daimler Motor and Gesellschaft. Not only did this help the manufacturers survive the years after the devastating war, but also considerably expand their business. After the merger, the group was named Daimler-Benz AG and had another prominent German creator, Ferdinand Porsche, as its chief engineer. All automobiles released after the merger were named Mercedes-Benz. Later, Benz left the company, but for many years it retained its name, Mercedes & Company. The collaboration between Benz and Daimler proved to be one of the longest in the automotive industry. Together, the companies survived until 1998. When in 1929 Carl Benz died, there were 30 million cars in the world. Today, there are over a billion. Mercedes didn't become a car for the masses. A little more than a million new cars with a three-pointed star appear on the market annually. The company never looked to reach the masses. For a long time, Mercedes remained the most expensive car brand until in 2021, Toyota took its place, leaving Mercedes second. The Mercedes brand is more than 100 years old. To this day, it's synonymous with prestige and high quality, which was made possible by the outstanding inventor and businessman of the 20th century, 